Okay. In the last class, uh, we were looking at the uh, conditions for stability, and we uh, found out that to find stability from Bode plot, first you find the unity loop gain frequency that is where the magnitude of the loop gain drops to 1 and then you find the phase at which uh, this happens and basically 180 minus uh, magnitude of the phase gives the phase margin right and for stability we want this to be greater than 0. So, if let us say phase margin is uh, less than 0, what can you say about the closed loop poles? Where will they lie? Uh, right half of S plane, right? So, you will have a case like this. So, if you look at the uh, time domain response, how will it look like? It will actually kind of uh, try to do something like this, right? Say phase margin equal to 0, what can you say about the closed loop poles? On the j omega axis. And then you will have uh, sustained oscillations like this. Okay. And of course, if phase margin is greater than 0, system is stable. But let us say uh, it is uh, you know close to 0, that is it is say 4 or 5 degrees. Okay. It is not really greater than 0, it is strictly greater than 0, but it is just about the uh, value. So, then can you tell me where might the closed loop poles lie? Left half of S plane, but in the left half of S plane, can you narrow down some uh, location? Just near to the right. Sorry? Near to origin. Near to imaginary, near to imaginary axis, here somewhere. Mm. Okay. So, the system is still stable. So, if you look at the time domain response, uh, you will if you apply a unit step, let us say, so the response will do a lot of uh, ringing like this before it eventually settles, right. So I mean having a phase margin of such a small value is okay for stability but uh, not very practical, right. Yeah, it, it is a time domain response will be very poor, right. So in practice you will need a uh, much higher phase margin say 60, greater than 60 or something. And that in turn depends on what kind of uh, specification and application you want. Okay. So basically, now if I give you two step responses, one is looking like this, and the other, say, looks like this. And I say one corresponds to a phase margin of 45 degree, and other corresponds to a phase margin of 60 degrees. So can you tell me which one will be the one corresponding to 45 degrees? The one with lot of rings. Okay. So obviously, uh, there exists a relation between phase margin and uh, the time domain response. And of course, for second order system, uh, you know, right, the damping factor, whatever. So you can actually find a relation between these two also, actually. Okay. Yeah, you'll see that later in the class, or I'll give it as an assignment to work out. But anyways. Yeah, so now we have uh, tried to understand stability uh, in the frequency domain. So, what can we do next? We have understood stability in one of the domains. So, it makes sense to try to get some sense in time domain. Again, I will not go into a lot of details, just a very qualitative understanding. So, let us say I have a system like this. So, the goal is let us try to understand uh, what will happen in the time domain response if you have a pole. Okay. So, let us say I give in a sinusoid sin omega dot t. Can you tell me what will be the steady state output of the system? Huh? Same sinusoid, but only the change will be in amplitude and phase, magnitude and phase. What will be the magnitude? Is it A naught? Is it all? Can you look carefully at it? 
I mean, if I give a sinusoid at a frequency omega naught, what will be the magnitude response? A naught by? Is that okay? Right, I mean, uh, we have A of j omega to be this, right? A naught of, sorry, A naught by 1 plus j omega by p1. So this basically says what is the response to a complex exponential at omega naught. So for sinusoid, you just uh, put it and take the magnitude. So, and what will happen to the phase? Huh? Minus omega naught by p1. Okay. So now let us say uh, omega naught is much much smaller than p1. So can you approximate this? Let us say this is v naught of t. So can you approximate this uh, under this condition? A0. The magnitude is approximately a naught, right? Mm. Omega naught is much much smaller than p1. And then uh, what about the phase? I have tan inverse, tan inverse of a very small quantity. So for small values of x, what is tan inverse of x? X. x. Okay. Okay. So this in turn I can uh, simplify it as sine of uh, omega naught times p minus 1 by p1. Okay. So the bottom line is if you have a pole like this for small sinusoidal frequencies it corresponds to a time delay of 1 by that pole frequency. So uh, now, uh, I mean, if you look at the magnitude plot, you will have something like this, right? This is A0 and uh, this is P1. So basically in this regime, it gives a delay of roughly 1 by P1. And in this regime, uh, the delay will be something else. Okay. So now let's say I take this system and uh, put it in negative feedback like this. And say it's a unity feedback for simplicity. <coughs> uh, at the input say I apply a unit step like this. Okay. So uh, this is t equal to 0. So the output initially would be at 0, let us say. So at t equal to 0 plus, it will continue to be at 0. Hmm? And uh, then you see at t equal to 0 plus, uh, this guy is 1, this is 0. So the error signal that drives the uh, system is 1 volt. So the system will start to respond to this uh, 1 volt excitation. So the response will start to increase like this slowly. So again, as the output now increases, the error voltage will start to reduce. So the kick to the system is reducing. So it will also uh, reduce its uh, the way in which it responds and then finally it sort of settles like this. Right? This is roughly how a first order system behaves. So now let us say, I mean now we know that with the first order system, the system is going to be stable in negative feedback. But if I have let us say more than 3 poles, it can easily become unstable, right. And uh, let us say I have a case like that. So I will assume that my system has say uh, 5 poles at the same location. So earlier we, when we just had one pole at a frequency 1 by p1, we know that the system uh, has some delay. Now I have 5 poles, so the delay will be higher or lower? The de delay will be obviously higher. Okay. So now again if I do the same exercise, I apply unit step, this is 0. 
now again at t equal to 0 plus the scenario is same this is 1 volt this is 0 volt so the error signal that drives the system is 1 volt but now this has a lot of delay so the response to this 1 volt is very slow like this right so again this will try to keep responding like this okay but ideally when we reach the final 1 volt the system must have stopped to respond okay but since this has a lot of delay by the time the output reaches the desired voltage of 1 volt the system might still be responding to some signal that was applied say at this time instant right because this inherently has a lot of delay right so basically now the system will be looking at this as the error signal so it will think that okay the output has still not reached the required value so it will try to push the output higher and higher right so this will start to increase like this yeah so but let's say at this point when it reaches it realizes hey the error is zero so i'll not respond so it will stop and after some point it realizes hey i have overshot the output so i'll try to bring it down so then it will do this and then this could happen uh, on and on and that's why you get this lot of ringing and unstable behavior okay so the bottom line is uh, when we have a lot of poles or especially lhp poles it means that you have a time delay in the system and the moment you have a lot of delay in the system the negative feedback loop will take a lot of time to respond and this can in turn result in instability i mean this you might have uh, seen when you are trying to mix hot and cold water to get an optimal temperature right if you have two taps running hot and cold you will try to take one uh, bucket of hot water and pour it in one and pour it one and then you will try to you know like dip your hand and see if the temperature is fine but the time you know you sense that the temperature is correct let's say the tap is uh, you know filling the bucket with more hot water so you'll try to put more cold water then you'll find it's more cold it's something like that if you have a lot of delay in the system this is what will happen cool so uh, now let's look at what will happen if we have an lhp 0 so we'll take a simple case again so this is the system so i'll do the same thing i'll apply a sinusoid at some frequency omega naught so what will be the steady state output yeah what will be the steady state output same okay a naught times omega naught square by z1 square times sin of uh, omega naught t plus tan inverse of omega naught by z1 Okay. So, I will do the same approximation again, omega naught is much much smaller than z1, so then what will, uh, how can I approximate it, a naught times sin of omega naught t plus omega naught by z1, so this is basically sin of omega naught into t plus 1 by z1 so what is this we are having a time advance so this looks cool right now we can see the future so you can build a time machine with this right instead of looking at black holes and wormholes why are we not doing this i mean looks like here i can sort of get the output in advance isn't it but obviously that's not the case so 
What do you think happens in practice? <coughs> okay, huh? sorry. Sorry, can you explain? <laughs> ah, why? Because delay is. Yeah, yeah, you are right. I mean, he has a point. We can't see the future, so obviously something is wrong. He is saying we can't make the system. I am asking why not or why? No, H of T need not be an impulse, right? I mean, if you. Ah, exactly. But see. Continue. Indectors. Exactly. Okay. So what he's saying is, if you, I mean, to get a zero in the system, what kind of circuit elements we need? Capacitors or inductors? We are considering only capacitors. So if you have a capacitor, we can have a zero. I mean, within quotes, can have, right? We saw that. But if you have a capacitor, what is something will definitely have? We will definitely have a pole. That is for sure. This will definitely give rise to a pole. The existence of 0 is kind of conditional. It may or may not have. Okay. So if this is the case, uh, what can you say about the number of zeros versus number of poles? In a practical circuit, this will be the condition. At most, you can have equal number of poles and zeros. Okay. So, if you have a system like, uh, if you have a system where you have a zero, you'll obviously also have a pole like this. Okay. Okay, but uh, okay, still. So here, this will result in a time delay. And uh, the zero here will give a time advance. But to have this uh, non causality, sorry, to have this causality, what is the condition we need to have? This still doesn't answer the question completely, right? I mean, yeah, it is true that we have a pole, the pole is adding a time delay. But if we cannot have an overall time advance, what should be the condition? Equal or time delay should be equal or greater than. Ah, the delay must be greater than the advance, right? So, okay. So again, uh, this you think about it. I let you ponder about this. You'll find out that this will be the case in practice. You can uh, argue. Uh, you know, you can contradict and uh, prove or let's think about it. Hmm? This will be the case. Okay, so uh, for example, if you take some system like this, I take a simple RC. <coughs> if I apply a step, what will be the response? How will the response look like? It will kind of do this. Okay. So now let us say I uh, oops, add a capacitor like this. So I mean, w once I add the capacitor, how many poles and zeros do we have? Can you look carefully how many poles? I mean, to again to find the number of poles, we'll short the input, right? And the moment you short it, the two capacitors are in parallel. Only one independent state is there. Do we have a zero? Ah, okay, this is the output. Okay, good question. This is the output. Do we have a zero? We do have, right? I can basically short this guy. And even otherwise, you can see we have two parts with different faces. So do, we do have a zero. 
so if uh, for this circuit can you tell me how will the step response look like <coughs> Uh, it will start from yeah why hmm? no your answer is right i am asking why do you say that yeah i mean let's say i mean uh, don't think about the poles right i mean this is a simple circuit okay we'll come to this thing later this is a circuit i am applying a step input i mean this is a first order system to completely know the step response what are the quantities i need i need what is the voltage at zero plus and then infinity and time constant if these three are there i can completely sketch it so what is the value at t equal to zero plus why is it ambiguity Ah, why? Okay, if we didn't have the capacitor, why was the voltage zero? Yeah, basically, capacitor cannot allow sudden change in voltages because if it has to allow sudden change in voltages, how much should be the current? Impulse. We need to have an impulse current to induce a step voltage across a capacitor. But here, and if we didn't have this guy, okay. if i have a delta t current flowing that will mean i have an impulsive voltage drop across a resistor nowhere in the circuit i have an impulsive voltage everything is a step right because i have assumed uh, this is a step and i have assumed capacitor is also a step so this cannot be the case okay but now i have added the capacitor c2 so uh, now if this provides an impulsive current where can the impulsive current flow i mean obviously it cannot flow through this resistor because we saw there will be a contradiction now we can easily flow through this c2 and c1 so now an impulse current flows through c2 that will induce a step voltage and here also we have a step voltage everywhere is a step voltage everyone is happy so the thing is again uh, i mean you might uh, loosely speaking capacitors act like a short circuit mm. at t equal to 0 plus so this guy acts like a short this guy acts like a short so basically only these two guys will be dominating at t equal to 0 plus mm. okay so it's basically a capacitive division between these two it is a short but it is not a pure short mm. okay the notion of the short circuit just says that only this capacitor is dominant at t equal to 0 plus is it okay this is a short it's in parallel with r1 so r1 is of no consequence so you consider only c2 and c1 and then you have a capacitive division so it will basically jump to this voltage at 0 plus okay and then finally it will settle to be fine okay so now you see the moment you added the zero you see a forward jump in the voltage right and loosely speaking it looks like uh, without the zero this was the waveform with zero the waveform seems to be kind of advanced the response is starting much earlier okay so this way the uh, zero here is trying to counteract the delay that was introduced by the pole so but it is not as though if you apply a step here i will start the i'll get the response oops so the time advance doesn't say that if you apply a step here i'll get a response at you know 40 less than 0 itself that's not the case you will have a push in the correct direction at t equal to 0 plus so that the output could settle faster Ah, this is an ideal case, right? Finally, you'll have. I see. Finally, you'll everything will have a finite resistance, right? So that way, we'll not have impulsive current. It'll have a large enough current, and of course, uh, the capacitor is not rated to handle that current. It will blow off.
okay so the bottom line is uh, lhp0 counters the time delay introduced by the poles and we saw uh, time delay is actually a bad thing when you have a negative feedback so this kind of helps in making the system stable <coughs> okay So again, in the frequency domain, we saw in the last class, right? So uh, we took some root locus example. So when we had three poles, the closed loop poles were doing like this, right? One of the poles actually, uh, oops. Okay, yeah. One of the poles went to infinity, and uh, the other two poles came like this and entered the right half plane. But uh, the moment I introduce two zeros here, so we saw that uh, this guy reached this, and uh, the closed loop holes kind of did like this, right? So in the opposite direction. Okay. So the moment I introduce left half plane uh, zeros, this was again like again the lame analogy, not tickets. Under without supervision of adults, they are becoming unstable. So, in presence of the adults, they kind of fall back on the real axis. So, this again the frequency domain understanding of why LHP zeros introduce, I mean, uh, improves the stability. Without the zeros, the closed loop poles could enter right half plane, but the moment I introduce left half plane zeros, they kind of easily come and fall back on the real axis making the system stable. Okay, so now let us quickly look at uh, RHP0 also. So again if I take uh, this system as the toy example. So you apply a sin omega naught t. So what will be the output for omega naught less than z, uh, z1. So what is the response if omega naught is less than z1? Yeah, what is that same thing? A naught sin? Ah. Minus omega naught by z1. Okay. Same thing. So here you see that uh, if I take omega naught out, actually introducing a time delay or advance this is again a time delay okay so an RHP 0 is equally notorious like an LHP pole and introduces time delay okay so not just uh, poles LHP poles even if you have RHP zeros the closed loop system can become unstable it does time delay, so is this system possible to like Yeah, this delay, right? Yeah, we can have this. Only, uh, okay, oh no, no, this alone cannot be made again. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, again, uh, if you take the same example, so here, uh, instead of directly connecting the capacitor, if I give a gain of minus 1 and then do this, So, if the input is again a step at t equal to 0 plus, what will happen now? This is C2, C1 and R1. Ah, so, it will actually try to go to negative, right? Minus C2 by C1 plus C2. Isn't it? Again, the same thing, only this portion of the circuit will be active at t equal to 0 plus, right? and this will result in a negative voltage jump and then uh, but the eventually the voltage has to settle to 
final voltage of 1 volt. So this RHP0 here it introduces a jump in the reverse direction. So this way the system will have to take more and more time to eventually reach the final voltage of 1 volt.